Okay, in the last video um, I talked you through the sort of doing things that are sessile, things that can't move. And I just thought for the sake of completeness I'd do estimating populations of mobile animals. Um, it's not one of your specified practicals, however I think it is uh, one of these where you're applying things to an unfamiliar context. Now the problem with mobile animals of course is that you start clomping around in a field or a woodland and half of your little mobile animals think oh do you know what I don't want to be here um, and they go away so uh, you're looking at things like grasshoppers, beetles, maybe spiders, mites, whatever and there are various ways of sort of trapping them so uh, let's just talk about trapping small invertebrates so um, the one that uh, I suppose most people know about is a pitfall trap so you dig a little hole, you put a little pot in it and uh, if you want your organisms to be dead or because you might just have one big fat spider at the bottom if you uh, don't is you can put some alcohol in there. Um, quite often you'll see them with little twigs holding them up with a little roof over the top that's to stop rainwater getting in so if you want them alive you don't put any liquid in and you stop any rainwater getting in because otherwise they'll drown and the idea is then that your uh, small beast kind of trundles along and it uh, it falls into the trap and then you can count it. If you're sampling from, I don't know, bushes, shrubs, uh, that kind of thing, you can use a pooter. A uh, pooter is effectively a sort of a little flexible bit of tubing, just make it a bit look a bit flexible. It goes into um, a pot with a lid on it and you've got another tube at this side that goes into your mouth. You see an organism, you put this end next to the organism and you suck on that end and the organism gets sucked down into the into the trap. I've never really quite fancied those, I just think mm, too much um, too much danger of sucking in a spider. Although the separation of these two tubes is supposed to stop that, I just don't really trust it as such. Uh, so there are pitfall traps. If you're trying to look at things in trees, and uh, some of you may remember the start of arachnophobia. Um, if you've got your tree or your shrub like that, you effectively hit it with a big stick and all the little things fall out of it. You put a big white sheet down and catch them. In the start of arachnophobia they did that and then they smoked the uh, things out and that's why they ended up with the big um, spider uh, crawling about and killing people because it was a horror film. Comedy horror film, I have to say. <coughs> um, and of course you can use a sweep net so you can sweep through uh, longer vegetation or even through the air and you can catch the things in there. Um, and that's all absolutely marvellous. But it doesn't, you know, you can count then what you have collected, but you don't know what that is out of the total population that you've got. So, you know, for a pitfall trap, you're only counting the things that are using that particular little trail through the forest. You're only counting the things that you've seen. You've only counted the things that happen to have not been able to cling on very well. You've only f sampled the population. So these are population sampling techniques. So, uh, calculation, you can do what's called a Lincoln Index calculation. So, what this assumes is that uh, out of your whole population, that when you sampled it, so this is my sample in blue, I've sampled these organisms. And I want to know how big that big population is. So, 
I need some way of identifying the in individuals that I have caught, so I'm going to call these my marked sample. And the technique is called mark, release, recapture. So the idea is that you then release your marked organisms. Um, so having caught them by whatever method, you mark them up. Uh, this has to be uh, inconspicuous because you don't want predators to pick them up more easily. Spicuous. Uh, it has to not cause harm to the animal or uh, make it more vulnerable in some way because otherwise it won't be able to mix back into its population. The idea then is that when you release it, all those marked organisms and you've got your population, that they mix back up right out into the general population. So it's no use really for uh, things that live in colonies. But wood lice are not, they're not great for this. And the idea is then you've got your general population. But they're all mixed randomly and evenly, so that's a bit of an assumption for a set off. I have to tell you, I think it works. And then you recapture. So you do the same sampling thing. And of course your recaptures will have in not marked individuals. And it will have in some marked individuals. So this is our re recapture bit. So release your marked ones and then recapture, hence mark, release, recapture method. Now what you're assuming here is that the ones that you took from your general population in the first place, so we're going to call those the marked ones, little n, and our total population would be big N. So what you're assuming is that your not marked ones and your marked ones that you recaught, I'm going to call that little k, that the proportion of that to that will be equal to the proportion of that to that, assuming that they've been randomly mixed. So that leaves us with, if we're doing a proportion, that's a division sum. So we've got the ones that we marked compared to the ones that we caught the second time. So this is the total catch of the second time. Will be the same as our first marked, the proportion of our first marked sample over n. And then you just rearrange that so that you can calculate your total population. So uh, I'm putting that over there. So I'm going to put that down there. So it'll be big K over n k. Pretty certain that's right. Just swapping them down. So da da da. So k little k goes on the bottom. Little n goes on the bottom. Yeah. Pretty certain that's right. No real clue. Okay, so um, just to uh, introduce you to, so you can do this with small animals, invertebrates, but you can also do it with vertebrates, although you do have to have a license and be a bit more careful. We don't try this at home. Um, with bigger vertebrates, mice, shrews, stoats, what have you, uh, you've got two methods available to you. You can use um, what's called a small mammal trap. Uh, these are humane traps. Ooh, that's not good, is it? So these are humane traps. Um, so the animal's going to be alive when you heave it back out again. They've basically got a little swing door here. So the idea is you put it down on, you know, a 
somewhere where you think a mouse might run. It runs in, the door shuts behind it. Up here, what you've got is food and bedding because uh, small mammals need to eat pretty much all the time because they've got a huge surface area in relation to their volume so they get cold quite quickly and they need to eat pretty much all the time so you have to leave them food and bedding and you have to check them at regular intervals and there's a time limit for how long you can leave a trap in situ because obviously if it goes in straight away and it runs out of food then it's going to die and that's not that makes it a not humane and it also doesn't help with the mark release recapture it's pretty pointless releasing a dead mouse it's not going to go and mix back in with the general population um, marking them bit of you know coloured felt tip on the tummies usually does the trick um, when we did this you do have to be careful when you empty them so this my life advice to you today is if you get to do this at university uh, you would tip the contents so if your trap's been triggered and the door's shut tip the contents so you take this little tunnel off and you tip the contents into a plastic bag so you can see what you've got because if you've got a predator like a stoat it will give you a nasty nip and that just enables you to be able to get hold of the scruff of the animal's neck and ecologists of course are weighing them we're more interested in mark release recapture so you would mark them and then release them now there's a problem with small mammal traps in that mammals are quite smart as organisms go certainly smarter than a beetle and they learn so uh, when I went and did this when I was at university uh, we caught the same mouse again and again and again because it had learnt that actually nothing was going to bad was going to happen to it but it got free food and free bedding so we just caught the you know it was practically dancing on top of the trap you know it didn't move anywhere it just wanted to get back in where it was nice and warm and lots of food uh, or, of course, they learn the opposite and they learn to avoid these traps like uh, like the plague because they don't like being um, being trapped. So, uh, so that can lead to uh, different estimates of numbers. Uh, to get around that, uh, this is a pretty notorious, I've just lifted this from a pretty notorious question from January 2010. You're welcome to look up the paper. Um, so a sort of a better method that doesn't involve trapping the organisms is to get the because we're looking at mammals here is to get them to run through little cardboard tubes or little plastic tubes and uh, the tubes are either lined or there's here we've got a bit of cards it's got fauna goo which is a sort of a, a glue that doesn't melt doesn't you know doesn't lose its stickiness in the rain and the idea is that the as they run through these animals will then leave their hair behind and then you can use the hair because it's got um, you know a hair follicle hair that gets removed just like if you pull your hair out there's a little white blob at the end you've got a cell there you've got DNA you can PCR that you can identify the species that you've got um, so you know if you here they've partly blocked it up with tape to make sure that the, the small animals, the shrews in this case, are running through and that they are leaving their hair on the sticky bit. Um, and that's sort of, you know, that's that's not trapping an animal so they tend not to sort of learn to avoid it because they just run through the tube and oh hey so they might have lost a few hairs but they're not actually getting stuck on it so um, they're okay, you're not trapping them, so they tend not to learn to avoid those kind of traps. So there's, um, there's another one for you.